kind of began with movement control, right? Uh, I mean, it, it, so there were sort of a lot of sources to it that came together, <laughs> roots that grew into one thing. Uh, but what one of the roots was movement control. We were studying movement for many, many years. And one of the great principles that's been around for 100 years, more than 100 years now, is that to control something, to move an arm, the brain needs a model of the arm, right? And so we have this thing that the brain constructs. It's called the body schema, which is a kind of simplified schematic uh, model, a simulation, if you will, of the body. And the brain uses it to keep track and to make predictions uh, about what your body's doing, what it's about to do, what it can and can't do. Uh, and we realized that, um, I mean, that's, that's a fundamental of what's called control theory or control engineering. And we realized that for the brain to control its own processes, we were thinking about attention. So attention is one of the most fundamental things brains have, uh, the ability to focus resources on a small range of items. And then move that focus around, not just through space, but also move it to abstract thoughts and move it to memories of yesterday and then move it back into the real world. So the brain is always moving that focus of attention around. And we began to think of it like an arm. Like it, how, how does the brain move that focus around? Well, it needs a, a, a simulation or a model of, of that focus. What does that mean for brain to essentially simulate that part of itself? Uh, and we started realizing, wait, we're talking about a self model. We're talking about, uh, something that's beginning to sound more and more like, um, you know, uh, awareness, what people refer to as subjective awareness. And so that's, that's really where that, that came from initially. That was a really grew out of the motor, motor control li uh, literature. So just like the body schema, the attention schema doesn't need to be a detailed model. It just needs to be an approximation. That's right. That's right. So we all have this intuition. We're all at a gut level. We're certain that we have a thing in us that can mentally seize hold of items. And when we do that, uh, we have uh, a deep understanding of those items. Vividly, we grasp them. We have vivid experience. And it allows us to make decisions and it allows us to remember, right? That's what we self-describe as having. And that's a, essentially a very fuzzy high level schematic description of what attention actually is. That's a brain um, uh, deploying and focusing its resources to deeply process a small number of things at the expense of other things uh, for more efficiency. And so that's really where we got into this concept of there's a, there's a, a model of attention or a schematic model of attention which is very useful for a whole variety of reasons. Um, and it, yeah, and it, it leads to this, um, the state of anyway, that, that, that's where that, that's where that all came from. Yeah. Great. So just terminology wise, uh, the attention here refers to a mechanistic process and then awareness is, is control at that schematic level. Right. So attention, of course, is a very difficult term because it gets used colloquially, uh, and then it gets used by a cognitive psychologist, uh, and then it gets used by neuroscientists, and everyone uses it in slightly different ways, uh, right? So it's very tricky. And by attention, what I really mean is uh, neurons in your brain process stuff. They process information, uh, and neurons, by virtue of how they connect to each other, will enhance some signals passing through the system and inhibit other signals. And so when you look out at the world, for example, um, there's certain things that jump out to you and certain things that get suppressed into the background. And that's because your neurons are uh, working together to enhance some signals so you process them deeply, uh, so you can react to them, so you can remember them uh, for later, uh, or so that you can make uh, intelligent decisions about them and other things out there in the world are being suppressed. So that's attention. It's a really a neural mechanism. Uh, but of course, we as humans, we don't know about that. We don't, you know, unless you study it uh, in school, you don't go around saying, oh, my neurons are colluding to enhance this signal. Uh, instead, what we have is a kind of self-simplified self-model. And we say, oh, I, uh, I have a mind that is right now aware of this and less aware of that. 
I'm experiencing this vividly and I'm experiencing that only a little bit. And I, I there's probably other things I'm not experiencing at all, right? That's our story we tell ourselves or at a, a gut level, the representation that we build to uh, understand that process of attention. And and cognitive psychologists understand attention differently? Uh, I, I think probably if you look in psychology, the definitions tend to surround behavior. Like attention means you're faster to react to something. Um, attention means you're um, oh, in reacting to one thing over here, you react less to something over there, right? So there's like a behavioral definition. There's a neuroscience definition in terms of signals passing through neural networks. And then there's a colloquial definition, which usually means the thing in front of my eyes right now. Right. Just different levels of description. They're all useful at their levels. Yeah. Yeah. So then you're proposing a totally naturalist, mechanistic uh, account of consciousness that eliminates some of the mystery that's been associated around it. Yeah, I mean, what what I'm proposing is that we self-describe as being conscious. We build a, a representation of ourselves. I mean, every, everything we know about the world and ourselves, everything, no matter how basic and obvious and certain it is, all derives from information, bundles of information of the brain, right? And so what this says is the brain builds among other chunks of information. It builds a, a bundle that of information that represents it, this attention process, right? So what I'm saying is we, we attribute consciousness to ourselves and we attribute it to other people because it's useful to do so. Right. So, so that that's an important part of this, right? So the attribution of consciousness to others. Um, so this would tell us a lot about social cognition as well. That's right. So uh, when I interact with you, uh, and, you know, right now it's a very simplified environment and we're just looking at each other and that's it. But let's say we're in a more complicated world and there's things going on and other people and, and I'm interacting with you and I need to predict your behavior. And to some extent, social interaction is all about prediction, behavioral prediction. Uh, how do I predict what you're about to do? How do I predict what I'm about to do? And how do I figure out the dance between those two and then decide what to do next, right? So um, I need to know at some level, what are the factors that drive your behavior? Uh, and it turns out, well, maybe this is obvious, but the factor that most drives your behavior is what you're paying attention to. Is if you're not paying attention to the donuts, you're not going to reach for them. And if you're you're not paying attention to the I don't know the the bee flying at you, you're probably not going to duck. Uh, and if you are paying attention to this, then I know you might react to it or you might file it in your head for later. Um, but I could start to make predictions. Like that's the baseline that I need to know is what you're paying attention to, what attention means in terms of how it influences you, right? Uh, but the, the the truth is, again, I don't look at you, I don't intuitively look at you and say, ah, his brain is taking in signals and his neurons are um, interacting. And no, what happens is I come up with a much simpler sketch. And in that simple sketch, I say, ah, he's aware of this. He's not aware of that. He's very aware of this, but he's only a little aware of that, right? So in trying to understand your state of attention, you know, me mechanistic attention, what I do is build this schematic construct of awareness or, or your your um, state of consciousness, what you're conscious of, what you're experiencing. And I attribute that to you. And that's at the heart of uh, theory of mind, social cognition, and social interaction. Right. I imagine it provides an advantage in predicting others' behaviors, um, having a schema versus no. That's right. That's right. So the whole point here is that there are reasons, there are, there, there's an adaptive value, like an evolutionary adaptive value for us to attribute consciousness to each other and to ourselves, to come up with a construct and then attribute it to each other. This is very useful. There's a reason why we would have evolved those mechanisms. Uh, and, um, and those reasons have nothing to do with there being actual magic consciousness inside our heads. Like, we don't need that. We don't need that as part of the explanation.